The following podcast contains language and themes that some people may find offensive. There is also heavy nostalgia with talk of ancient confectionery and cats that just don't want to be bothered anymore. Enjoy! Hello and welcome to That Was The Week That Was. Was it the podcast that is loved by lots and lots of listeners? Yes, it's true. You don't know them, though, because they all go to a different school. Joining me as co-host for this one is Hayley Pettit. Good morrow, Hayley. How are you? Ah, good morrow. You all right? Thank you. Yeah? Yes, yes. Very good, very good. No complaints. Good. No no complaints this week. You're all tickety-boo. Well, I've probably got quite a lot, but no one really cares, so... You're right, we don't. Uh, say, so that's the banter, that's good, that's great. Our guest for this episode is a comedian and writer who you will have seen on, well, pretty much everything, to be honest with you. It's Lucy Porter. Hello, Lucy, how are you? Oh, I'm good, but I do care, Hayley. I care very oh, much you. about what you've got going on. I've got a very uh, sore finger there. Oh. I've just got a plaster on it, you'll be able to see. Um, and my uh, one of my legs is a bit sore as well. <laughs> I, I'm on quite an uncomfortable chair. My bum's gone a bit numb. But... Yeah. I mean, we've there all got go. our crosses to bear, haven't we? See, and now we, we've ended up, Hayley, you didn't even get to moan. We were just trying to encourage, create a safe space for you to moan. <laughs> I'm here to listen. It's fine. So, so, Hayley, seriously, what, what's the problem? I don't really have one, Nothing. actually. No. Okay. Yo, so, right, look right. at that. She... Oh, God, she reeled us in a treat there, didn't she? Absolutely. She was like, oh, I don't like to moan, guys. And I can't because my life's perfect, unlike you, Lucy. Totally perfect. Yeah, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, So we've known each other for quite some time, haven't we, Lucy? It's got to be fair. We've known each other since... We go way back. 2005, (laughs) isn't that true? Isn't that true? We uh, were doing that charity Mm -hmm. single, do you remember? Oh my God, how could I forget? We raised £6 million for yes. the orphan kittens, didn't we? We did, we did, God bless them, with that lovely song that we did, the uh, Do They Meow It's Christmas. Uh... <laughs> That's right. That's right. It was me, you, Pudsy Bear, Mr. Blobby. Yeah. Um, I mean, all the others were mascots. I don't know how we snuck onto that record, really. Well, I don't, I don't know. I mean, because I was the mascot at the time for, you know, that that type of jam, that particular type of jam. Um, Jepson's I, Jam, it's the jam you love. Exactly the one, yeah. They did all the strange flavours like gooseberry jam and uh, uh, elderflower. It's not that weird. Elderflower. No, well, it, it's not that me. weird either. It is to me, because, uh, you know... <laughs> I'm a strawberry I mean, rabbit rabbit. flavoured. <laughs> yeah. That would have been, you know. That one failed, and rabbit flavoured <laughs> failed completely. Um, yeah, I mean, but it was it was a good time, as you say, £6 million uh, pounds for the uh, orphan cats. And I mean, uh, they've never had it so good, the orphan cats. They live they, a life of absolute luxury. They do, they do. And uh, do, do we hear from them now? No. No, no, no. Not, not a meow. Not a meow. Very. Uh, so grateful. So, let's crack on. So, Lucy, the reason you're hmm. here um, is to talk about your week and how it was. My wonderful week of injuries and slight soreness. Yes, so please, we're going to start with Monday, as weeks mm-hmm. tend to. How was Monday well, for you? Well, now, Monday is the most exciting day of the week because it's bin day. Yes. So, ah. Uh, it's just, it's absolutely gorgeous. We've just moved from the London Borough of Harrow to the London Borough of Hillingdon. Mm. And our bin day, it used to be on a Tuesday. It was, you know, n- neither one thing nor t'other. Whereas Monday bin day, you, you purge yourself of all the weekend's excesses. Yeah. Everything's cleaned out. It's like having a colonic or something. Yes. And then you, not that I've ever had one, but... Um, well, yeah, I, um, you know, yeah. Anything's I possible. mean, you know, they're still young, so it's you know. <laughs> I happen. could do it as we speak. We could live stream it. Well, oh, I see, live stream it. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, a Monday, a Monday's a really good day to have a bin day. I've never had that myself. Yeah. Uh, the where we are now is a Wednesday. Yeah, where we are now is a is, is mm. midweek. You know. Yeah. But, pointless. 
But yeah, Monday, that's fantastic. It's amazing. And also, now listen, I, I mean, I don't want to get competitive here, but I know you two are both in the Garden of England. Uh, we are, yeah. Beautiful Kent country. Yeah. So. Um, but we get all our rubbish collected every week as well. So we get the full package, recycling, Everything. food waste and general bins. So you don't even have that sort of tension of what week is it? What are we doing? Yeah, I know. I know. Oh, we used to have wheelie God. bins. See, I, there's there's always huge controversy because in Harrow they have wheelie bins, and in Hillingdon we leave our rubbish out on the street, which you know looks terrible. <laughs> but um, and, and the foxes go mad for it. But uh, it does mean that we get everything collected every uh, every week. That's the trade off. But there's always people are always writing on the website next door saying, uh, oh, why don't they have wheelie bins in Hillingdon? It looks so awful. And then everyone's like, yeah, well, but we get all rubbish collected uh, every week. And it turns into <laughs> like it's massive. It's a massive local issue wow. about the bins. I completely understand that actually because I'm I grew up in Northwood, so probably quite close oh, to where you are. Yeah, just down the road. Yes. <laughs> yes. So um, yeah, I, I do quite miss having a wheelie bin. We we have a big brown one for like composty stuff, but mm. yeah, no wheelie bins. I, I could get in our old one. I used to do that on a, <laughs> only the recycling one because it was relatively clean. But I would get in it and <laughs> surprise the children. It was hours of fun. What are you going to say? Surprise the bin men. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of a tip at Christmas, I just used yeah. to get it. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, you have a, a wheelie bin, you know, just so you can get in it if you want to. Yeah, I might just for my own private, you know, <laughs> yeah. my own private uses just have a wheelie just bin around the back. To reminisce. That's good. Oh, I, I, love, I love the fact that as English people, we can really delve into... So, you know, bin culture, mm. Mm. and that we have the ability to actually discuss this and say, I'm jealous of the fact that you can just get rid of everything each week. Yeah, I know. I am I know. jealous. I mean, it is, it's paradise. There's, there are many other disadvantages to the London Borough of Hillingdon, don't get me wrong. Um, but the bins, they've absolutely cracked bins. Terrible parking. Amazing. Now, listen, the other obsessions of British people, bins and parking, <laughs> um, the parking meters are a disgrace. Really? Mm, it's appalling, absolutely appalling. They uh, barely ever work. So I did host the British Parking Awards not so long ago, and uh, I made an absolute point in my opening remarks of upbraiding the London Borough of Hillingdon on the terrible state of their parking. Now, the British Parking Awards sounds like <laughs> not necessarily, <laughs> look at this parallel park. Exactly, exactly, because I cannot parallel. I'm really bad at driving, really yeah. bad, like an absolute liability. You get an achievement award. Yeah, I mean, I should get a kind of Maureen from driving school commemorative <laughs> uh, <laughs> award for being, because I cannot, I mean, parallel parking, it can take me days, weeks, months, I draw a crowd. <laughs> oh. I have to sit on a cushion. Do you sit on a cushion? Are you tiny as well, Hayley? Oh, my gosh. We're all tiny. I'm tiny as well. I'm... <laughs> oh, a group of tiny people. <laughs> oh, is... A little borrower's podcast that we're doing here. Yes, yes. <laughs> the short people. We're representing the small people. Yes, well, all good. This is my... Do you know, this is my third podcast in uh, 24 hours. Oh, oh, wow. Really? I'm binging. Yeah, Aren't yeah, yeah. Just... I'm just chatting away about i mean i've not talked about bins on any of the others or parking <laughs> so you've got the exclusive the scoop yeah we get the exclusivities definitely, definitely. <laughs> we had charlie higson on the other week and he spoke about quavers and mars bars so yes you know we get, yeah, the, we get the big <laughs> it's always the big ones well, this is what people are interested in, parking bins and confectionery. When I was on, um, I, I did Celebrity Mastermind and the when they ask you what you want your special subject to be, I said, I want to do British confectionery of the 80s and 90s. Mm. And they wouldn't let me do that because they said it was a bit too niche. Yeah. Is it, would it, you see, that's really sad because, um, go, go on, what's your favourite chocolate bar that doesn't exist anymore gone that's, well that's uh, i mine. mean pyramid yeah that's a good one love a pyramid that's did, a did you one. ever have a pyramid Haley? Mm -mm, never heard of it how old are you okay. Haley? Like left out hmm? how old are you Haley? sorry it's a personal question but 
well. <laughs> um, I'll be 40 next year. Let's put it that way. <laughs> okay, good. Well, you should know Pyramid then. <laughs> well, obviously, just missed out, haven't I? <laughs> Hugely, by the sounds of it. <laughs> yeah, mine's secret. That was my favourite. Oh, yes, they were nice. I, I the, remember those. It was almost like a chocolate wicker type thing with mousse all the way through it. <gasps> Oh, yes, they mm. were lovely. God, I'd not thought about those for years. If that had come up, I might not have got it, actually. on the. Yeah. Uh, I'd, let me do you. I'll quickly improvise a quiz. Um, okay, so which chocolate bar was advertised with the slogan, you wouldn't fire a man till he'd finished his blank bar, would you? Oof. I was really confident until you said the <laughs> Yeah, here we go. This is another another slogan. Bat through the chocolate and chew real slow. Oh, oh. Sure is a mighty chew. Oh, hang on. Ooh, That's that does sound familiar. Oh, no. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you're gonna have Pain to tell chase. me. You're gonna have to tell <laughs> yeah. me. A man's got to do what a man's got... A, a man's got to chew what a man's got to chew. It's not a Texan, is it? Because that's too obvious. It was a Texan. It was, was it a Texan? A Texan. Hey. Oh. Uh, although, actually, the... Oh, no. The, the, a man's got to chew what a man's got to chew was for a type of sweet that came in toffee, banana, and chocolate flavoured. Not toffos. Yeah, toffee. Well done. Oh, what, when I when I doubt myself so much when I guess these things, like, <laughs> not, not 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 that. It not, could be, be that, well, You surely. must you must boost your confidence there, Alex. You know, um, boost. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but they still do those, but not mm. the. They did two flavors, didn't they? At one point, they did a. Did they do one with that like, guarana or something? In it? Yes, yes, they did. Yes, they did. Yes. Oh, God, this is fantastic Strange. content. <laughs> what was the name Here of the Cadbury's chocolate bar which had rum-flavoured raisins inside it? Mm. You'll know it. No. 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 It's, it's, no, you've got me on that one. I do know it. It's but... Old Jamaica. Old Jamaica. <laughs> okay. I'm going to give you one more. Yes, please. Okay. This is for the holiday. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, here we are. Right. I think I found the new podcast. Uh, <laughs> yes, it is. 70s sweets. Um, yeah, they're more, uh, I think more 80s. Oh, hang on. The, right, it's a chocolate bar. I'm going to subscribe to you, a chocolate bar. And you are going to have to tell me which one it is. So this was... Um, it was a hollow, twisted chocolate bar. There were two fingers in each pack. Spira. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Hayley, you're going to the Maldives. Yay. You have won. <laughs> Excellent. You could actually okay. suck tea through those. <laughs> but it was Oh. Just eat them. <laughs> I remember when I showed my children how you can suck drinks through a chocolate finger if you bite the ends off, and it's they've never respected or loved me more. That's all it takes, <laughs> isn't it? Excellent, mummy. Yeah, I, I miss Spiras as well, and mm, I miss nice. everything about my youth. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's what it boils down yeah. to, isn't it? It's just it's you, you reminiscing it. The chocolates yeah. are probably shit. I mean, they probably are crap. <laughs> yeah. Now. yeah. But um, how old are you, Alex? I'm uh, 42. Yeah. You could have done it like Haley and said, "I'll be 43 next birthday." Let's just put it that way. Yeah. yeah I I, that's know. worse. That's the worst way of saying your age, though, because then you're <laughs> throwing forward. Yeah. You should say, "I was," you know. I mean, I was 38 10 years ago. There you go. That's sounds, that's better, isn't it? Or maybe make it, it something a bit more mathematically sort of yeah. awkward. So I was 41 seven years ago, and then that leaves people guessing a bit more. Yeah, it? that does. That does. That probably does. get it wrong. Yeah, yeah. no, the, the the arithmetic would probably floor me on that one. But, uh, but yeah, no, I'm 48, and I do yeah, I very much feel all my best days are behind me and my best chocolate bars. And, uh, yeah. you know, we were talking last night actually about the 90s and how amazing they were. And then came to exactly the same conclusion that we were like, actually, no, they weren't good. We were just young. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I, my favourite rabbit hole to go down is old TV adverts on mm. YouTube. And yes, there is a YouTube channel called We Love Old Adverts. Mm. which I highly recommend uh, you check out because um, obviously they talk to people about old uh, old telly and I I showed on that an advert I did in the 1990s oh. for mobile phones oh, where really? I danced around in with a sort of there was a, a fox puppet this really manky fox puppet and i had to sort of dance around while the fox puppet made sexually suggestive remarks about me um and then i had to hold up mobile phones and uh, the sort of punchline of the advert was hands up who wants a siemens because it sounded a little oh, bit like semen i think i don't really understand <laughs> oh <laughs> Yeah, don't know what to say to that. So that was the 90s. Things yeah. were not better in the 90s, trust no, me. No, they weren't, they weren't. Oh, well, that's, um, yeah, draw a veil over that one. Um, <laughs> yeah, so Monday was bin filled. And actually, I mean to ask you, uh, on Mastermind, what uh, subject did you choose in the end? Mm. Well, I've done it twice, and uh, uh, won it both times. I don't like to mention it, but since you asked, well, you won uh, both times. That's good. I am mastermind champion of champions, mate. Listen, that's amazing. I, you're very lucky to have me. I'm um, <laughs> what are you doing here? Uh, so I did the first time. I did Steve Martin. Oh, okay. The life and works of, and then the good, second good. time I did Victoria Wood, the life and works of. So, a little comedy theme, and yeah, uh, it was great fun. So, what? Obviously, I need to ask you, what would your specialist subjects be? Mine would be uh, certificates from the BBFC from the years nineteen eighty four <laughs> to present day. <laughs> I love that. It's it's like borderline Rain Man. Uh, when it comes to those, what's it's weird. the name of the guy who always signed the the certificates during the um, most of the during 90s? that period? Uh, James Furman. Yes, very good. Aren't you good? That's such a great specialist subject, though. That's exactly boring yeah, enough I mean, to it, work. It's, it's it's one of those things where it's like if you um, said a film and. Um, I, I, in my head, I just immediately visualise the poster and the certificate there, and that's it. And, and it's, yeah. it just appears. Nuns on the run. Uh, 12. 15 <laughs> on video. <laughs> um, Uncle Buck. Uh, 12 again, 15 on video. Yeah, interesting, isn't it? Those, uh, you know, comedy romps. You'd, you'd, oh, yeah. You wouldn't want them to be a 12 now. You'd want that as a PG, wouldn't you? Definitely, definitely. Yeah, that, that's where Mrs. Doubtfire comes in because that was originally a twelve, and then most councillors decided to put it as a PG. Uh, uh, so they decided to edit out the offending language and then make it a PG. Uh, there you go. Very good. Wow. So, Haley, can you top that? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not really. I mean, I don't think anyone could really. But uh, no. What? No, I, I was just going to go with something a bit more general, but yeah, you're, well, that is like super niche, Alex. Oh, it's weird. Niche. It's weird. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> it's like a, a party trick where people go, oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Well done. Um, you look so quite stressed, gonna, Alex. Yeah. But I also, also quite enjoy being tested on it as well, which is really sad. Uh, so, anyway, Tuesday, <laughs> let's move on to Tuesday. We've had bins on a Monday. Tuesday, how was now, that? Genuinely, and this is, I'm being entirely honest and forthright with you, um, only marginally less exciting than bin day. Tuesday, I flew to Cannes in the south of France. Oh, wow. No, wow. I mean, it didn't beat bin day, obviously, but uh, it was my first flight out of the country for 29 months, however long, no longer than that, probably two, yeah, two years. And I had completely forgotten how to get on an aeroplane and how to sit down. And um, and I was so excited. And I was like, this is the most amazing thing that's ever happened. I got a phone call on Saturday saying someone's dropped out of a gig in Cannes on Tuesday. Can you make it? And um, so, uh, yeah, so I basically went, oh, my God, yes, got on a plane on Tuesday morning at 7 a.m., and was in Cannes for Tuesday lunchtime to do a little talk to a group of uh, women and then flew back that night. So I have destroyed wow. the planet single-handedly. 
Yeah. But you had a good time there. <laughs> wow. But I'd do it again. Yeah. I got my, my feet in the sand in yeah. uh, the south of France, and it was unbelievable. But it was really, I don't know if, if you've been anywhere, but um, it's its just weird. Yeah. It's just... Not, not know, recently. <laughs> no. Nobody has. Not for a while. No. There were loads of other people who were on the plane just going, yeah, we've not done this. We don't know. And I, I was like, oh, this is so brilliant. It's so lovely being on a plane again. And then my ears started absolutely killing me within about sort of two minutes of takeoff. Did you find yourself listening to the safety procedures more intently? <laughs> yes, genuinely Just, did. Yeah. Just because it's alien and new. It's like, oh, wow. This is like the movies. So um, I put my mask on before helping others. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> selfish <laughs> did you have to have the um not that mask but the other mask on for the whole flight yes uh, except when you were eating or drinking of course well yes yeah and uh <laughs> you know they, i love the fact that they explain that to you <laughs> that you, yeah. you are allowed to take your mask off to eat and drink it's um, weird isn't it yeah we've actually got a uh, a trip to la booked uh the beginning of next year Ooh. oh yeah i know it's it's but it, it's nice. so and I'm just thinking about the the journey in a oh, mask. Yeah. The whole train, uh, the whole train, the whole plane thing, and the mask is going to be long way. a long way. Yeah, scary times. Ten hours or something. Something like yeah. that. Borderline. Oof. Yeah. I used to hate before I had kids doing a long flight was my idea of hell. I was like, oh my god, ten hours on a plane, you know, it's so boring and uncomfortable, and you know. And then since I had the first trip I did after I had the kids, um, I got a gig in the Seychelles. I'm gonna, I'm letting you think my life is incredibly glamorous. It's really not. Can and the Seychelles are the most glamorous things that I've done. But it was, um, so it was like to have many hours to Dubai and then a little flight from there to the Seychelles. And I have, because since having children, basically, I haven't even been to the toilet on my own in 11 years. I'm always, yeah. There's always someone needs something and the, all the cats wander in or there's always some sort of uh, emergency just when I'm needing to, to empty my bladder. Um, and so I just basically sat there watching movies and having the best and I love my children and my husband and my cats very much don't get me wrong but having an uninterrupted period of time on my own was incredible and nobody walked in on me in the toilet either I sat on that tiny little airplane toilet having a whale of a time <laughs> sounds marvelous actually <laughs> yeah I don't have kids but Haley can relate can't you Haley oh yes yes very much what you just described there is basically paradise <laughs> Watching a terrible film certified by the BBFC as uh, now. What did I watch? I'll try and I'll try and get you to uh, do. Do you do current films as well, or is it uh, it's a specific time? Mostly, here? yeah. It, it, it's easier in the eighties and nineties, but yeah, go on. Free guy. Uh, twelve A. Yes, twelve A. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Surprisingly good film, actually. I, yes. I wasn't. I, didn't think I was going to like it for some reason, but yeah, surprisingly good movie. I know, I know. I knew loads of people who absolutely hated it with a real passion, and mm. I. But then again, you see, I think my standards have gone right down because I thought Cruella was brilliant, and everyone else I knew hated it. Oh, I loved it. Yeah, I thought it was fabulous. Loved it. Mm. There's very few films. I, I will watch any old crap now. I really will. I've sat through like, you know, the Paw Patrol movie. Fine, great. Fine. <laughs> Dora the Explorer. I mean, that you know, nobody expected that to be any good. It wasn't, but I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. The film that surprised me that was uh, was the Jumanji remake. Oh my god, um, I love that so much. It's incredible. That's great. Yeah. Incredible film. yeah. Dwayne the Rock Johnson. I never understood. Uh, you know, I used to watch a little bit of wrestling in the nineties, and I was like, yeah, well, the Rock. Yes, I can smell the, what the Rock is cooking. Thank you very much. And um, <laughs> then. Uh, I have become absolutely obsessed with how good he is in everything since. Mm. Even Jungle Cruise, which I didn't adore. No. Uh, but, um, yeah, he's just brilliant. He's an, he's an absolute genius, that man. And Jumanji, I've probably watched Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle about 25 times. It was on repeat constantly for a while in our house. <laughs> it's good. It's, it's not a bad thing. It's a good <laughs> film. I enjoy it. And uh, actually, one of our previous guests was in it. So, yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. Um, the William Tokarski, who played the merchant who offers Kevin Hart cake. Oh, go. yes. 
one of the funniest scenes in the movie where he explodes. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, spoilers. Yep. <laughs> yep. It's been out we for did, a while. We did talk about that, about, you know, how did it feel killing Kevin Hart? But yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I did try and do the um, Ruby Roundhouse, Ooh, Baby, I Love Your Way uh, dance battling stuff for the kids, but they were very unimpressed by that. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> Well, I, you she know, I, I would be impressed by it because it'd be like, yes. <laughs> All right, I will do it now yeah. if you insist. Right, here I go. <laughs> go on. There you go. Ha. Thank you. Yeah. Look at. Oh, Incredible. Did you think I could get my leg up there? You didn't, but I did. Well, I hoped you could, <laughs> but there we go. <laughs> That's not improved my sore leg at all. <laughs> um. So, can what what was what was the gig? That sounds um, incredible. Was it on the beach? Uh, it was within spitting distance of the beach, which... Oh, good, because they do that, don't they? <laughs> they do. They, they're very dirty, the French. I forgot how unbelievably appalling toilets can be in other countries. Um, but at the airport, right, you get to Nice. It's Nice Airport, obviously. Get into Nice Airport, and I thought, I'll just nip to the loo because I hadn't had enough on the tra- on the plane. I was like, I haven't really enjoyed this enough. So I <laughs> uh, went to the loo in Nice Airport, and it's the, you're welcome to the country, and it is absolutely vile. It's a mm. there's no seats. Why don't they have seats? No seats, and then the little poo shelf. So you have to examine what you've done. It was just awful. A poo shelf. <laughs> so I'm, I'm I'm not familiar with that either. <laughs> Do you not? Know, you know the foreign toilets where it's there's a you know. They, they don't let shelf. things drop into the water as God oh. intended. Oh, they, oh, my God, yes, okay. It yep. sits, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I wasn't doing a poo. It was it was yeah. just a wee, but it still it sits there kind of judging you. <laughs> Sweet corn eyes looking at you. <laughs> I know what you did. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... But they, yeah, um, yeah, cans. Uh, I keep saying cans. It's can, isn't it? And I, 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 it annoys me when people say things wrong, and I'm doing it myself. It's can. I flew into nice airport and then went on to cans. Sounds like a shit airport. I, I could have gone to Saint Tropez, but I didn't no, go to Saint no, Tropez, no. Uh, sadly. Or Paris. Oh, <laughs> and Hives. That's in the area. I've only been to France, I think, twice. And that was when I was a kid, so I mean... No, you're not missing much. The toilets are awful. Yeah, and it was Calais. Yeah. yeah. We did a um, day trip to Calais from our school in Croydon, and yeah. it was absolute chaos. Shoes went over. So I think it was Ros... What was her name? Ros... Anyway, I think Ros's shoe went over the side of the ferry because... Donna and Lynn, you know what they were like. Donna and Lynn, oh, they were having a bit awful. of a laugh. Of course, they were. And, bants. Uh, cuh, crazy, crazy bants. So, yeah, she went over and uh, someone was sick. I think Emily yeah. Harrison, I think she was sick. Yeah. I remember being sick the morning of going in my, because I was staying at a friend's, I was sick in his uh, dad's flower bed. Oh. I remember that. And the only other thing I can remember about the trip to France is the amount of dog poo that I saw. Oh, yeah. All I can remember. The rest of it, <laughs> complete blur. <laughs> we are terrible middle-aged English people, aren't we? Going out. Awful. Well, they don't even Awful. they don't even have bin collections on a Monday. I mean, no. that's France for you. Terrible toilets. I, I don't even do dog dirt right either. It was all no. funny colour. It was weird. <laughs> Rabid dogs, probably. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Wednesday, 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 middle of the week, hump day. What was that like? Hump day for me, Wednesday. Um, well, Wednesday generally in my life is all about uh, sewing. Oh, I didn't expect that. No, I didn't either, but uh, that's <laughs> what we're going with. So I sewed um, a jacket. To something or just... <laughs> <laughs> Together or made I one? I sewed a jacket. Yes, I made a jacket, a tiny little golden jacket for my cat. 
a hole with the poor thing. Oh, gold. Good choice. <laughs> is it sequins or are we talking... Uh... Yeah, it's a Quizmaster jacket. Basically, I'm ah. hoping to uh, introduce... After the success of our charity single for the Cat Orphanage, obviously, obviously. I'm thinking of branching out further into cat-based entertainment. So um, a cat-themed quiz show hosted by a cat for cats. Wow. Get on there, yeah. Yeah, mm. I'd, I'd, yeah, I'd watch it. I know it's not aimed at me, but I would definitely watch that. <laughs> well, it's like, you know, it's like Squid Games intended for an audience of 15 plus, but is now being watched by toddlers, apparently. So, you know, anyone can watch anything these days, it turns out. Your BBFC classifications are meaningless now, Alex. Yeah, I, I've, I've had arguments with uh, the BBFC and Netflix regarding their certificates. And that's not you. That's not a joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. Um, it's uh, Twister. They sh- they show Twister, right? And yeah. uh, P- PG, granted, yes, PG. And they've mm-hmm. got the BBFC certificate PG on Netflix, but mm-hmm. they are showing the American PG thirteen version, which does say "fuck," which you yeah. cannot have mm-hmm. a PG. And I said to them. <laughs> Netflix, I said, <laughs> you cannot have you, you there. Netflix, <laughs> general direction. You cannot have a fucking a PG film, and um, <laughs> they were like, it's rated PG. I said, yeah, no, but it's the cut version. Anyway, it was good for you. Meaningless thread. Yeah, on. standing up. I did the same thing on Disney Plus um, with Disney Plus. They're showing big, but it's the uncut version, uh, which has a fuck in it. And they've got it as uh, as zero plus as the age rate. Anyone? Can watch that. <gasps> what? What? Yeah, they're not listening to me. No one listens oh to me. Oh my gosh! Let somebody think of the children. Well, if my children hear this podcast, which I hope they never do, because um, they'll they'll be like, "Why is she complaining about us bursting in on her in the toilet?" We thought she liked it, but um, it uh, they will be like, "Oh yeah, we'll watch that." They love they yeah. love a bit of swearing. And they're at that age where it is so exciting hearing someone say a swear word, and they all yeah. get like them and their little friends. Um, I injured myself quite badly, and I did. Uh, the uh, they call it sugar honey iced tea. That's apparently what the young kids say <laughs> instead of saying the word. And I said that, and it was just a source of joy and delight for days and days. It was like mummy said that <laughs> word. It's so yeah. exciting. And then my husband showed them uh, the Blues Brothers. They thought, oh, the Blues Brothers is a nice film. Let's let's show them the Blues Brothers. And I don't know what the rating of that is. Uh, Alex 15. will tell us. Yeah, and it deserves every, it deserves a 15. So they learn a lot of new words, lovely American swears. Oh, that's wonderful. It works the other way, though. I remember um, the first time I swore in front of my mum, and um, I was playing Sonic the Hedgehog, and I got to the last level and and died. Mm. And uh, I believe I said, for fuck's sake. And my mum was there, and she was like, "What did you just say?" And I was like, uh, "I think we both heard nothing, it." Nothing. You know. uh, How old were you? Uh, must have been about eleven, maybe. Thinking I think that's acceptable. I think we should have like a sort of classification system. Just give children an age at which they're allowed to use each swear word. Yeah. Like drinking or something, where you go, look, you can basically because when they're very little. At school, they're not allowed to say things like idiot. And so they yes. used to say the I word. They'd say, oh, God, someone said the I word, mummy. And I was like, what the fuck is the I word? I've got no idea. <laughs> <laughs> what are you fucking talking about, you little shits? Yeah. And um, <laughs> then uh, it turns out, yes, it was idiot. And then mm. th- and then they thought flip was a really bad word because they were told not to say it because obviously the other it F word. Yeah. stands in for you. But, um, but yeah, now I wouldn't really mind... I mean, I've got friends who swear in front of their children all the time, but I don't. I'm not a very sweary person generally. No. Um, but yeah, I sort of try and tone it down a bit for the kids, really. But I would, yeah. if if one of mine said shit now, I'd be like, all right, crack on. Yeah, it's it's quite it's quite endearing, isn't it? In a way, it's it's quite funny. It's like, oh, look at you. Well, it's the Richard <laughs> Curtis, you know, children swearing is kind of funny and cute. That's it. It's his fault. There's that one, the one where the little girl's looking out of the window and there's a goat. Have you seen that one? Yep. It's like a little internet thing. And she just yeah. looks out of the window and goes, it's a fucking goat. And it's just... <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, that's proper cute. Yeah, I uh, my husband swears in front of the children all the time. Mm. And uh, so it's quite good. So they think he's the sweary parent. Okay. But yeah, my mum never swore. And I remember that my mum swore once, to my knowledge, in her entire life, which was when we watched the movie Titanic, rating... 12. 12. And it was Christmas, and we all sat down as a family to watch Titanic. And at the end of it... My mum, as the, as he was floating off into the ocean, as Jack was disappearing, she just turned to the room and went, well, that was shit. <laughs> and it, I was like, if you're going to swear once in your life, that is exactly the time to do it, is at the end of that, a shit film. That is it. That is it. It's, just, it's a long film as well, very long. And to find that one, that shit is... I, I, was, I was surprised because the, the... I haven't seen it in quite some time, but... You you think the end of the film obviously is the ship sinking, but that's like an hour. Yeah, oh, and, and you think that's more. the that's the end of the film. <sighs> There's so much room. There was so much room on that piece of wood that she was. She was just like, sorry, there's just just not enough room for you. You can just freeze to death in the ocean. <laughs> but I love you. I love you so much. <laughs> Someone said recently that she is the evil person of that film. Yeah. Um she's really evil, truly evil. Because yeah. she, she's she got the heart of the ocean mm-hmm. and that guy spent all that money trying to find it and she's got it on her and doesn't say a word about it. She bores them with this long story about this guy that she met once at, <laughs> and had sex with one night. Mm-hmm. And at the end, when she dies and she goes and sees Jack, not her husband that she spent the whole of her yeah. life with. Yeah. Whoa tell you and lobs it in the sea at the end just throws yeah. it away and that yeah just drops it in the sea at the end why would you do that why would you do that wouldn't would you no one would ever do that well she would infuriating film Evil well my mum was girl. right she was she yeah was, she was definitely 100% right 100 percent right um so i forgot what he did actually on wednesday now you did say i've forgotten um, as well i sewed a tiny jacket for my cat sewed a tiny jacket for your cat that's I mean, the one you know how did your cat feel about it Absolutely loved it. Um, you know, there's nothing cats love more than being dressed up and generally interfered with. I mean, they yes. our cats, I swear to God, even more than most cats are unfriendly. Uh, like some people have cats that come and sit on them and will purr and be stroked and everything. Our cats absolutely despise us. Like this, they'll be near us. And they'll let me, he'll let me sort of scritch his head a little bit, but he deep down absolutely detests me. Oh, that is a real shame. You see, our pug is uh, the complete opposite. She is so placid. Um, she's going to, she is. She is. <gasps> oh, oh, hello. hello. <laughs> oh, you're so beautiful. Oh, look, 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 look. Oh, oh so that's a beautiful is... baby. Hello. Oh. This is Pippa. So cute. Oh, Pippa, um, you are Pippa. stunning. She's a lump. Pippa, you are so cute. She's oh eight years old. God. She can't hear me. But... Uh, eight years old, and she's a uh, former, um, someone used oh. her for breeding for five years. And now she's, oh, oh, no. Oh, she's one well, of those eyes have seen things. I mean, it is extraordinary. Oh, yeah, she's seen a... things. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the most telling thing is that um, her owner was Polish. Mm-hmm. And her name's Pippa, mm-hmm. but it's P I P A, and in Poland that means uh, bitch or cunt. Oh, oh, little Pippa! So now she's Pippa P I P P A. Yes. Oh, Pippa Pug, good. Which is perfect. So, you yeah. have just <laughs> melted my heart. That is unbelievable. We um. Our cats are rescue cats as well, and I do mm. always tell people that because I think it makes me sound like a nicer person. Um, <laughs> 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 and they hate us. And we rescued them. Uh, Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> well, in a way, I think we get extra points for that because you know yeah, it's you all very well rescuing a lovely animal who who then loves you and returns the favour, but ours are absolutely furious. They you know they would rather have been left in the hell house they were found in than brought yeah. to live in this sort of comfortable suburban. Semi. In the head, they're like, excuse me, when are we going back? 
<laughs> but it's still on. When are we going back? <laughs> yes. I can't believe it's still here. Yes, this awful woman who keeps trying to dress me up and uh, <laughs> and telling me she loves me. I had um, I was on a Zoom call in lockdown, and uh, the host had unmuted everyone so they could say their goodbyes. And I didn't realise this. I went to let the cat out of the room and came back onto the meeting and everybody was there going, oh, oh, my God, oh, that is so cute. We just heard the way you talk to your children. And I was like, oh, no, that wasn't my children. No, that was very much the cat because I was like, I love you so much. I'll see you in a bit. Love you. And uh, I don't get away with that with the kids anymore. But uh, the cats cannot, you know. Oh, I love it. I love it. (laughs) Um, So we're going to move on to Thursday after the whole uh, cat jacket (laughs) scenario. (laughs) After the cat Um, jackets. Yeah. Thursday, Lucy, come on. What was that like? So Hit me with that good stuff. Thursday. Um, I'm genuinely actually looking at my calendar to see what I did. Oh, yoga. So much yoga on a Thursday. Yoga is, um, it's yoga with Natalie on a Thursday, which, you know, you know what Natalie's like. She pushes you, but you welcome it. Yeah. But the thing is, she pushes you while you're doing it, which is the problem. You fall over all the time. (laughs) Well, it's... (laughs) It does you, certainly test you your reflexes. It. It's kind of <laughs> yoga as a martial art where you have to be prepared at any point for the yoga instructor to come over and push chop you. your windpipe. <laughs> I thought like that's a thing where they just push you over when you're a downward dog. It's like just point and laugh at you. It's for your own good. Uh, well, there's a bit, you know, tree pose where you stand on one leg. Yes. And that you get people falling over in that, which is, I mean, it is hilarious. It is funny. I've fallen over in tree pose. Yeah. Now, do people fart? Because I've never yes. actually been to a yoga. Thing. I was going to. I was going to ask yes. that. It's just, yeah. Oh. I didn't know if that was some sort of fake thing that happened, but yeah, they do, do they? Oh yeah, no. I mean, some really quite extraordinary. I mean, I would say probably proper audible cartoon style. <laughs> Um, yeah. I've only encountered about four or five of those, but little squeaky, little bum squeaks, they happen quite yeah. a lot. <laughs> okay, and sometimes you're not sure whether it's vaginal. I mean, you know, I'll just throw yeah, that out there. Of course. Could be. No, I, I, that was another question I was going to ask, but I held back, but you answered it anyway. <laughs> um, I've never actually done yoga myself, and I can't imagine I'd be particularly great at it because any sort of suppleness i've had or any sort of stretchiness has gone i think mm, yeah but you're not getting any disagreement from me and Haley there no i know i know it's, it's probably true <laughs> just, yeah, yeah. It. It, so it, i mean my right leg can cross over my left but my left leg struggles with my right one yeah oh you're totally lopsided everybody is and it is yeah. hilarious where you just realize that you i have the strength of a kitten in my right side and of thor in my left side and if i try it well this is why you fall over you see because you you if your yoga teacher isn't pushing you it's because you've got you know you overestimate the capacity of one of your legs and underestimate yeah. the capacity of the other and then you kind of crumple to the floor farting yeah i mean <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> it be the first time. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, yeah, yoga. Um, how long have you been doing that for? Um, 25 minutes. gosh darn years. Wow. <laughs> Five minutes. Um, yeah, no, I'm really old, it turns out. And you, the, the embarrassing thing is you would think that by now I would actually be able to do anything, but I still can't. I still can't oh, touch really? my toes. Yeah, literally cannot touch my toes. So it's wow. no advert for yoga. Stay at home, kids. Stay at home yeah. and just atrophy <laughs> instead, like Alex. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, if I had a yoga mat, I literally would just fall asleep on it, I think. That would be it. That's yeah. about the most use I'd get out of that. How many yoga mats have you got? Three. Uh, I've got a blue one, I've got an orange one, and I've got a green one. And I've got Ask, two asking blocks, all the important questions. Blocks, straps, I've got them all. I've got a little uh, bean bag that you put on your eyes. Yep. I did thought I did think you said jock straps for a second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't really know what a jock strap is. What's the difference between like a jock strap and a a, a truss? <sighs> oh my gosh, I've no idea. Um I think 
I'm trying to think what a truss is. <laughs> well, it's something they used to refer to in sitcoms of the 1970s. Any sort of older yeah. man always say, oh, me truss. They all had hernias and trusses and uh, stuff like that. Well, but, I, th- yeah. I, think, I think a jock strap doesn't cover the arse. I think it literally just covers your... Um, Genitalia. Yeah, in a sort of... I don't know. You what know it's boy? one of them things. It's like a sports thing, is it? Like a box. I think it's a sports thing. Yeah. I think yeah, I think so. I think it just keeps everything where it should be. Straps. So it straps in your your testicles and penis. <laughs> Let's yeah. be medical. <laughs> so the testicles and yeah. the pinnacles uh, are uh, strapped out. Uh, I also appreciated the way you said mine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> your testicles and penis. Let's okay. focus very specifically on Alex. On mine. Uh, and Alex's uh, genitals. Yeah. Have you never, you've never worn a jock strap then? I haven't. No, no. no. God, no you've not I've not lived. even been tempted to. No. <laughs> it's, I suppose, the uh, female equivalent is the sports bra, which is one of the most fiendish and devilish mm. instruments of mm. torture ever invented. I got one recently from Next, and it goes over your head. And then you have to clip like a bit at the back. And I have never yet managed to uh, use it unassisted. I had to get a woman. So I managed to get it on with my husband's assistance. And then I went to, and I was doing a class at the gym. And then I had to get a woman in the changing room to to unclip the bit at the end because I couldn't do that. <laughs> it doesn't sound very user no, friendly, really does not. it? It's really not. It. And you end up with like squished, sort of a squished nipple in a sports bra. It's really unpleasant. You need a, a front fastening one. Yeah, I do. Spring loaded front fastening. <laughs> Easy release. <laughs> like Barbara a Barbara Windsor. Windsor. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> they should market those, the Barbara Windsors. Yes. They're the, and that's what they should call them. The, bar, yeah. the Barbara, Bar, Bra, Bra, Bra Windsor. Barbara, Barbara yeah. Windsor. That's a brilliant yeah. idea. Oh Barbara. my God. I mean, actually, genuinely, I reckon. The Barbara. The Barbara. With Bar. Yeah. Yeah, Barbara Windsor Bras. Yeah, right, we're on to something. Let's get in touch with her yep. estate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dragon's Den, here we come. <laughs> yep. Front fastening, front fastening, spring-loaded bras. I can yep. see, I don't even know who's on Dragon's Den anymore, but the bloke from Ryman's, is he still on it? Probably, yeah. I mean, not, I'm not taking business advice from anyone who owns Ryman's. Have you been in Ryman's? Yeah, my, my wife used to work in one. Really? Oh. Yeah, <laughs> briefly, yeah, yeah. And uh, she didn't really talk about it much, so I imagine that kind of sums it up, really. Yeah, yeah. that's that's the Ryman yeah. story there. That's it, that's it. <laughs> I, yeah, it, 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 Dragon's Den probably would pick it up, but just for the line when, you know, they, they spring open and so someone could say they're out. Or, yeah, you know, or, like those boobs, oh. I'm out. Yes. Yeah, nice. I'm out, yes. Like the nipples. The, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Quite. That's well, the quiet. sound bite. There you go. Like the nipples. Um, so Thursday yoga. Friday. What was that? I'm in love, uh, you have oh, to say, mm. after Friday. It's more crafting. So I had to, um, and again, this is a very sort of parent relatable thing. Um, at the very last minute on going to school, my children were like, oh, since it's the end of term, they've said we can come in in Halloween costume, which they had known oh, for a week. Of course. Mm-hmm. I had presumably been emailed by the school because they do this. They email you. And I'm like, I never I never check my emails. I'm very backward in that respect. And, um, yeah, and so I had to actually create two Halloween costumes in the space of – it was like a proper Generation Game Style challenge yeah. in the space of half an hour before school. I had to create a Dracula and my daughter decided she wanted to go as a spoon. And so we made a Dracula costume and a spoon. I know, I know. Okay, I know. Okay, okay. I said exactly, that was the face I did as well. A spoon. <laughs> a spoon. A spoon. Yeah. <laughs> it's dull, it'll hurt more. So. Um, oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Very good. That's got a checkered BBFC history, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. But yeah, go on. Uh, cause... <laughs> oh, look, I love this. I'm so interested because I would imagine it was solid. Oh, actually, no, yeah, maybe sort of 12. Because we never had 12, did we, in the old days? We had PG Not... or 15, that was it. Well, actually, um, 12K 
came in in eight, 1989. Batman was the first one to be. Oh, to okay. Um, oh, Robin Alex. Hood, Prince of Thieves came out in 1990, I believe, but they Warner Brothers wanted a PG. So they ripped the shit out of it. They really did. And has it been restored? It's been edited quite a lot. It has. It has. It has been 12. Yeah, it has been restored. Yeah. Quite- it's quite grimy, isn't yeah. it? It's quite, it's quite brutal, it is. that film. It's very brutal. And also Christian Slater says the very um, appropriate fuck me he made it when they uh, <laughs> go over a wall. Christian Slater, of course. You worked with Christian Slater, didn't you, Lucy Paul? I Tessie? did. How about wow. this? It's segways coming nice. out of my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Imagery. You know, exactly <laughs> the scooter type segue. Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it hurts. It hurts. Um, but yeah, you did one flew of the cuckoo's nest, didn't you, with um, Mr. Slater? Oh, and what uh, an experience that was! Yeah, it was amazing. It was a year mm. of basically um, drunken high drinks in the West End, uh, and one day we'll make a film about about that uh, oh, episode. Because it was very, it was exciting. It was fraught. People were sacked. The show was cancelled. But then the show was back on. And then it was like a real proper, the arc of it was, this is a disaster. It's never going to happen. It's all terrible. And then uh, it was a glittering triumph. And uh, and Christian Slater, the uh, absolute brass neck of him, every single night demanding a standing ovation. <laughs> because in America, you get a standing well, ovation for basically doing anything. You fart in a yoga up. class and they did give you a standing ovation. <laughs> so uh, so every night at the end of the show, he used to go, come on, up you get on your feet. And uh, people would dutifully... Does it work that way? <laughs> you, can't, you can't demand your own standing ovation. <laughs> <laughs> get up off your seats now. But yeah, because my friend Margaret, who came yeah. to see it, reminded me the other day, she was like, yeah, he made us, made us stand up. And everyone was really... About wow. I mean, I'd get it if it was like not for him in a way. If it was Ooh. like, come on, look, these guys, <laughs> these guys, go yeah, your feet exactly. here. <laughs> not for yourself. Mm. No, that's, that's very un British. Yeah. But he no, was no. lovely. And it was after having watched him in Heather's and like, you know, just one of my absolute oh. all time favorite films. I was like, this is the yeah. most exciting thing Definitely. that's ever happened. It, it's, it's, it's a good wow. thing, isn't it? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, I never, I never saw it, unfortunately. But I was aware of it and really wanted to see it. <laughs> so. We'll do it again. I'll get the gang back together and please uh, do. We'll, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll pop down to Kent and do a special. Yeah, just for me. We got a massive garden. So yeah, just do it in the garden. It'll be fine. And I will stand up at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you'll have to. There'll be yes, no question that that's going to happen. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to crawl out of the garden. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I'm just going to crawl back into my house. <laughs> you know the way out. Oh, but yeah, um, yeah, that must have been quite a, quite a cool. That experience. was 2004, so mm. I can't imagine how old we would all look now. Because yeah. that was how... See, look, talking about the mental arithmetic not being great, I'm like, how many years ago was that? Like 17 years? 17 years ago. Um, yeah, 17 years ago. I was 31 at the time. Mm. Wow. I could probably have touched my toes then if I'd really tried, but not then. <laughs> Didn't have the time to. You know, just... <laughs> but yeah, Christian Slater now. I mean, although I think he looks better now than he did then because I think he's very clean and sober and, you know, clean yeah. living now. So, yeah, he's probably, he'd probably be an even better McMurphy now than he was even yeah. then. Yeah. There's, there's, there's some, you know, Hollywood stars that have, they look so much better older. And mm. I agree with you, Christian Slater. I think he has he has that kind of almost timeless look, but some just really fall off the wagon, don't they, quite badly. I mean, Charlie <laughs> Sheen is quite an extraordinary. Charlie Sheen and Mickey Rourke, mm. you go, God, yeah, you live. I mean, you live well, you pay the price, but my God, they've had a good time in the process, I'd imagine. Yes, they have. Mickey Rourke's an interesting one oh, because yeah. you don't I, – I don't, I don't actually see where – it's like one – way he looks and then there's this way he looks and there's no in between almost it's kind of like you, yeah, you can't yeah, pinpoint, yeah. pinpoint that moment but but he is brilliant in the whichever iron man it is oh yeah yeah and the yeah. wrestler is fantastic the wrestlers yeah god that was a good movie film. wasn't it great film great certificate film. please 15 yeah thank you <laughs> <laughs> i i remember as a 12 eh? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, 
it's so sad. Um, it's a compulsion, isn't it? I love it. He just can't help himself. It's knee jerk, and it's automatic. It's knee jerk. <laughs> Uh, until, until you say something like Die Hard with Vengeance, and I go, ah, now, well, that was a 15 um, after cuts, and then it was released at 18 on the video. <laughs> and then oh, it goes nice. into oh. oh, wow. Do you know, though, I would, I would listen 100% to a podcast about um, film classifications. I think you should do it. Uh, BBFC have got one. <laughs> I oh. think I will do one. I'll do, a, I'll do another one, a side one that just says, yeah. I agree with everything they say. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I concur. I concur. Um, so we'll move on to the weekend then. Weekend. Let's get that one out of the way. <laughs> Crazy party times. Oh my god! Yes. This is like where we it. pump up the hot tub, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> we do have a. We've got a hot tub. We've become suburban. I like the. Swingers. I like the phrase "pump up the hot tub." Pump up the hot tub because <laughs> it gets a little bit deflated because <laughs> the cats. Sometimes <laughs> it is. It's an inflatable hot tub, and it is the naffest thing. Um, but oh. I absolutely, I love it so much. And everybody does think that you're dirty sex people if you have a hot tub, I've discovered, because, oh. yeah, it's got a bit, but I'm not at all a dirty sex person and very much the opposite. I'm a very clean no. person yeah. who goes in the hot tub. You always have soap in the hot tub. I do, I do. I scrub it thoroughly. I bleach it every now and then. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I spend my weekends basically immersed to the neck in sort of tepid water. It's lovely. <laughs> I, I envy that because I've I've tried I've tried a hot tub a couple of times and oh. uh, obviously I don't have one, but I I find them to be a wonderful thing. Mm. And that whole rule about you can only be in for twenty minutes—that's nonsense. No, twenty hours, mate. Twenty hours at the weekend. Twenty hours. Yeah, rubbish. Oh well, I'm glad. I, I like I like a whole. Have you been in a hot tub, Haley? Ever done that? Oh yeah, a couple of times. Not not as many as I'd like, but um, yeah. Come round. Listen, what we're what we're ending up with here is let's just do the next recording from the hot tub. That sounds good. I can go and visit my dad just down the road. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Hot tub time machine. What was the rating on that one? Uh, Fifteen. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I saw I saw a heavily edited version of that on TV in America, and it just made no sense at all. Every swear word was changed. Scenes oh. were changed. It was just. <laughs> What was the point? The um, that and me, myself, and Irene, and those two films should not be shown at four pm. Um, oh, that's a horrible movie. Internet. I really didn't like that. I love I love the Farrelly Brothers generally, but I thought that was it's quite ugh, mean. Really didn't like it's quite it. Quite a mean. Yeah, film. it's a horrible. And none of horrible the, film. to be honest, none of those films have aged particularly well. There's something about Mary I saw recently, and. Mm. There's a lot of problematic stuff in that film. Yeah. yeah. Well, Shallow Hal, I mean, yeah, that's oh, an no. extraordinary <laughs> document of its times, isn't it? See, again, the 90s, man, te- was that early 2000s? That but was anyway, early 2000s, I think, yeah. The early 2000s, terrible time, even worse than the 90s, and we've established that they were shit, so. Yeah. Awful, mm. awful times. Um, <laughs> well, so if you were going to rate your week on a scale of up to whatever, Lucy, what would you rate your week in total? Do you know what? I would give it a BBFC rating of uh, 12A. 12A. So, yeah. It's generally been family friendly, but uh, there's just a little bit of terror and tension. There was a little bit of peril. Yeah. Borderline 15, by the sounds of it. Yeah, well, what in, depends what happens in the hot tub, of course. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know that can that can bump it right up. What happens in the hot tub stays in the hot tub <laughs> unless you've got a good filter system. Um, so, <laughs> Lucy Porter, it's been an absolute joy to have you on. And uh, and is there anything that you would like to plug? No. Good. Thank you. Excellent. No. That about rounds it all off. A huge I'll just thanks. be plugging in my hot tub. Yeah, just um, to plug in that. Just want to plug that to one more time. <laughs> yeah. Lucy Porter, she has a hot tub. Um, <laughs> that about rounds it all off. Uh, huge thank you to our guest, Lucy Porter. As I say, it's been an absolute joy. Hayley, do you have anything to add? Uh, do you know what? That was amazing. And also my face is starting to hurt. My cheeks are hurting because I have been laughing so much. So thank you. Thank you oh. for that. Good. What a change from the last one you did. So, uh, <laughs> my thanks again to Hayley Pettit. Thank you again to Lucy Porter. Thank you so much for doing this. And I'm going to continue thanking you even after the podcast. Thank you, though. though. But thank you. No, but thank, thank you. Thumb, no, thank no, no, you. no, no, no. Thank you. No, thank you. And in your hot tub time machine, please go back and get me a secret chocolate bar. Thank you. Um, I will. I've been Alex Sivright, and that was, that was the week that was, was it? That was. It was. Goodbye. Bye.
זה נו פושל, פרום לבר תחוה שתהיה. פוץ זה פושל פניו דובלה וסה, I'll leave your pooder so you can pick through and investigate it later. זה פושל, available in all bond pharmacy now. <laughs> 